JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for August the 4th. I am Harlambos Pissuros, head of research here at uh, JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US, uh, the US dollar traded lower against most of the other major currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian session uh, Wednesday. It decked out some gains only versus the Canadian dollar and the euro, while it lost the most ground versus the Kiwi. Now, the relative weakness in the US dollar combined with the strengthening of the risk-linked Kiwi suggests that the markets turned to risk on trading, uh, uh, to risk on trading again at some point yesterday. However, the weakening of the Looney points otherwise, thus in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here most major uh, EU indices traded in the green again, with appetite improving even further during the US and Asian sessions. The only exceptions were the German DAX and Japan Nikkei 225, which slid 0.09 and 0.22% uh, respectively. Now, despite the improvement in investors' morale, our view has not changed yet. We still believe that uh, the path of least resistance for Asian equities to the downside as fears over strict regulations in China have not vanished yet. While we prefer to maintain a flat stance with regards to the European and US uh, shares, although from a technical perspective, their broader paths remain to the upside. The reason why we prefer to take the sidelines is the looming US employment report on Friday. As we know, the yesterday expectations are for a strong report, and if the forecasts uh, indeed uh, take flesh, this could undermine Fed Chair Powell's remarks that the labor market is, uh, has, um, uh, has still a long way to go, and thus uh, it may revive speculation over uh, early tapering. Yes, a strong labor market could mean that the economic uh, that the economic recovery the, the economic recovery excuse me continues at a decent pace, but it could also mean that interest rates could start rising earlier than previously thought. Higher interest rates mean higher borrowing costs uh, for firms as well as lower present values, and thus upbeat numbers could weigh on equities. Now, coming back to the FX sphere, the Kiwi was the, ma the main gainer, supported uh, not only by the rebound in the broader uh, sentiment, but mainly by New Zealand's better than expected employment data for the second quarter, which was released today during the early Asian uh, morning. The unemployment rate dropped to 4% from a downwardly revised 4.6% instead of just ticking down to 4.5% as the forecast suggested, while both the new added jobs and the labor costs index accelerated by more than expected. At its latest meeting, the RBNZ kept interest rates unchanged at 0.25%, with the language in the accompanying statement being more hoggish than expected, which raised speculation that this bank may push the hike button even as soon as um, uh, this month. Thus, the strong uh, jobs uh, numbers may have increased drastically the probability for a rate hike at the bank's uh, upcoming uh, gathering, and that's why the Kiwi searched, searched in the aftermath of, uh, of, uh, of the release. Now, as for the rest of today's events, today we have the final market services and composite PMIs for July from the, from the EU, the UK and the US. The ISM non-manufacturing PMI for the same month and uh, the ADP employment report for July. 
The final market prints are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, while the ISM non-manufacturing PMI is anticipated to have inched up to 60.4 from 60.1. As for the ADP report, it is, expected to show that, it is expected to show that the private sector has gained 700,000 jobs, slightly more than June's 692k. This could raise speculation that the NFPs due out on Friday may also exceed somewhat their June print. Now, as for tonight, during the Asian session on Thursday, Australia's trade balance for June is coming out, with the nation's surplus expected to have increased by nearly a billion Aussies. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.